Hey logical people, GKV here. By the end of this video, you will have your own chat board. You will ask questions to this model and it will answer your questions. In this video, we will take a deeper dive and we will understand the most, the most pivotal architecture that has been designed. And I kid you not, this architecture is used in the most sophisticated text models that you see on the internet, for example, ChatGPT, Gemini from Google, and even in the vision models, for example, when you generate images from the text or when you do image captioning and much more. So without further ado, let's get started. So in this video, we will learn how to build your own chatbot using transformer architecture, okay? This is the part one where we will go through the theory part of how you build a transformer. And in the second part, we will do hands-on coding using Google Colab, okay? So let's first understand the problem statement. Why do we need a transformer architecture? And to understand the problem, let me tell you a story. So once upon a time, there was a king called GKV. And he ruled a kingdom called Logical Land. In his kingdom, the logical land, everything was done logically. In the logical land, there was no global warming because everybody uses wind energy, solar energy, or even nuclear fusion to generate energy, right? And the end. That was the shortest story you must have heard, right? Anyway, the point is, the problem statement that we were looking at, why do we need transformers? Now, here's the question. Do you remember the name of the king of the logical land? If you do, perfect. And if you don't, now you know what is the problem. Every neural network that we have built so far has one fundamental problem. There's one input and one corresponding output. There is no correlation between the timing of the input, but when it comes to generating text, it is extremely important to understand the context of the text that has been spoken. So when I ask you who was the king of the logical land, if you have been paying attention, you know it's GKV. Let's have another example. The animal did not cross the street because it was too tired. Now consider another statement. The animal did not cross the street because it was too wide. Now, when you give these two statements to an AI model, inherently the model has to understand what does this it refers to? Does it refer to the animal or does it refer to the street? This is where we build the attention mechanism using transformer architecture, okay? Perfect, now we know the problem statement. Now let's see how we can solve it. In 2017, Google published a paper called Attention is all you need. And this changed everything. The architecture of transformer model is rather simple. It has one encoder that takes all the input, encode this information, and then send it to a decoder, and then decoder provides an output. Here are the three key points that we need to understand about transformer architecture. Number one is, it's not sequential. You're not giving one input at a time. We give all the inputs in one go, right? Number two is, it creates self-attention. It creates three different variables, query, value, and key. We will see what this means in a moment. And then it creates multi-head attentions that basically encodes and decodes what this sentence means. For example, when we say, hello, how are you? This is the entire transformer architecture. I have mentioned the source here. You can go and read about it if you want. We will go and look a deeper dive into how do we build this transformer using PyTorch. So the first thing that you notice is inputs. So now let's talk about what is input embeddings how do we provide it to the transformers? So the first thing is input itself. 
Now, input is basically a sentence. It could be anything. For example, hello, how are you? Can you give me a Python code to read a PDF, right? Anything that you provide to the model is an input. So I'm saying, hey, hi, my name is GKV. One, two, three, four, five. The length of my sh statement is five. And then I have zero, which is basically padding. Why do we need padding? Because in every AI model, we send data in a batch. Right now, we are looking at a batch of four. Therefore, I'm sending four different statements to this model. How are you? It has three words, and then we have four different padding. The longest sentence in this batch is, how will you go to the school? And that's it. Along with this, you know, words and, you know, a matrix of words, we also pass a matrix, something like this, which is basically zeros and one, depending upon the padding. So for example, we have zero here, 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 and one everywhere else, which means all of these ones represents some word from the sentence and zeros are basically paddings. We will learn what padding is, what words it when we start coding our model, okay? But try and understand the concept here. Okay, now what I will do is, I will take one sentence and I'll make it like this. Something, hi, my name is GKB. What we do when we send this data to the model is, we encode every word with a vector which is something like this. Now, right now, my vector size is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Therefore, the word hi has been encoded with a vector of length 5. Similarly, my has been encoded with five different embeddings, name, is, and gk. All of this has been encoded with five different um, embedding vectors, right? Now, if I take this, and bring it to my model, this is how it looks. Hi, my name is GKV and the embeddings are like this. So this one table will become one matrix here. Similarly, if you go back here, we have batch size of four. Therefore, what we send to the model is this kind of matrix, which you see here, and then one, two, so this is one, this is second, this is third, and this is fourth matrix. And this is how it becomes a batch size with maximum length and embedding dimension. So in general, we will have, I don't know, batch size of 46, maximum length of 2048, and then embedding dimensions of 128, which means I can have a sentence which could be 1048 words long sentence. Each word would have a vector encoding, something like this, of 128 long vector. And we will have 46 such statements like this. This is how we will prepare our data and send to the model for training. So one important thing about input embeddings is that this is learnable. Okay, so all of this input embedding, so the numbers that you see are learnable. What I, when I say it's learnable, what I'm saying is, we will start with random values, and as and when we do the training, the model will try and learn, associate different words with different things. For example, a king is a man, a queen is a woman. So all these relationships of learning at different words, our model will understand, and accordingly, it will update all these embedding weights. Okay, perfect. So after we have done our inputs and pass through input embeddings, we get an output which looks like this. Now the second thing is this is done. The second thing is positional encoding. <laughs> Now look at this statement one more time. When I say the animal did not cross the street because it was too tired, now the model needs to understand that it refers to the animal. Therefore, it also needs to understand 
which position does it hold in the current statement so this is position number one position number two three four five six and so on right so when we send data to this model we also need to send positional encoding before we send the detailed data to this architecture okay let's have a look how do we do that we do that with very simple mathematics let's let's understand this with this example so let's say my model has five dimensions this should be five what i do is i will plot a graph which is a sine graph as you can see here it's a sinusoidal graph right i i will plot different graphs and then based on the position of the word for example let's say i'm looking for word high i will go here and say okay high is looking at somewhere 0.6 so it comes here and then for the second dimension for this one um, i'm looking at somewhere here so 0.3 for the third dimension i am looking at somewhere here which is 0.9 and so on so depending upon what is the embedding dimension in your model we can use these mathematical uh, let's say sign and cos functions to figure out in a given sentence what is the position of the world okay now this graph already looks a little bit messy here's an example with nine dimension encoding oh now this is a graph with 128 dimensions of encoding no human can understand this only computers can understand this anyway coming back to the human example now we have word multiplied by embedding size there it is All right so this is my positional uh, embeddings it looks similar to what we have done here in the position it looks similar of what we have done here in the input, in, input embeddings the only difference is that positional encodings are not learnable what it means is that once we know the position of this word we don't have to change that it doesn't change in the sentence therefore we will mark this as non learnable when we design our model right and the formula to generate um, these waves and eventually getting the positional embedding is this n is defined by 2i divided by d of model which is basically a number of encodings in general we will use for example 128 256 512 and so on so positional encoding for even number is done by sine function and for odd numbers is done by cos function right so this is how the matrix will look and if you go back to the architecture you would notice that we are adding positional encoding with the input embedding so what we will do is we will do this we have the word embeddings we have the positional embedding we will add both of them to get this the word embedding will give us the meaning or the representation of the given word positional encoding will give us the position of the word in the sentence obviously we will have same number of dimensions because we are doing a plus b and whenever we are doing matrix addition the dimensions has to be same and then we will get a new encoding which will have meaning and location both together you would notice something that while we do the addition we have more green than yellow now this should make sense because irrespective of the position i would like to know the meaning of the word i would like to give more weightage to the meaning of the word rather than the position therefore when we add these two encodings we multiply this vector by the square root of the embedding dimension so if it's 512 we multiply this by square root of 512 to give this more weightage okay we have done this we have done this now comes the most important part of the architecture which is multi head attention <laughs> Now, the multi head attention is this orange part this looks complex when you zoom in it has five different things happening 
it looks very difficult but it is not once you understand it so let's take a deeper dive in the multi header tension what we do is we use the same positional encoding and we create three copies of it we call it v value key and query okay so this is step 1 then we project all of this to a linear layer so after linear layer we will divide this input into h different matrix we do scaled product attention then we concatenate everything pass it through a linear layer and this is our multi head attention let's have a look let's have a detailed look of each step that is happening within multi head attention the first thing is we start with the linear layer so we will have this we will create three copies of it pass it through linear layer and we will divide this into batch size maximum length h and d underscore k such that when you multiply h and dk you will come back to the embedding dimension so for example if you are using a dimension of 512 with eight heads the output would be batch size maximum length 8 and 64 okay does that make sense perfect from here we will do scaled dot product attention it is very simple don't worry about it so coming back to this example we took our matrix divided it into eight different matrix of 64 size so this is what we will do we will take q and k divide it into eight different matrix take a dot product of each of them separately we will get a dot product result which will be batch size maximum length and embedding size so we multiply this take a dot product with this one so we transpose it and then we get this matrix and here is the formula for scaled dot product attention so if i go back when i zoom in into this you get that and you should notice q and k will be a matrix multiplication which we are doing here then we scale it we mask it which is optional which we will see once we start doing our coding we take a softmax and then we multiply the result of this with v so once we have this we will multiply that with v here is the formula we say q multiplied by k transpose divided by square root of the dimensions because when you take a dot product there could be a explosion of value so we scale it down and then we multiply this with the v and once we do that we concatenate all of these eight different vectors so that we start with this so that we end up with the same dimensions where we started with 1 2 3 we we'll have eight such dot products like this and once we do this we should have attentions for different words in a matrix this is the idea this is the core of transformer architecture okay so once we have the embedding size we have the attentions we multiply this with the value and then we get the final value so we have looked into the input embeddings which will give us the meaning of the word we got the positional encoding this is not learnable we just provide the position of each word and we do multi head attention we take three copies of the same input pass it through mha get an output and now we will concatenate everything we will merge everything together so here it is we get the scale dot product we concatenate it and send it through a linear layer at this stage you should notice that after multi head attention we are right here but we also have an arrow that's going from here to here what we are essentially saying is this that hey take my input embeddings do whatever you want to do in the multi head attention which is here we do the multi head attention here whatever is happening and then we concatenate that with the original values like this and this is what you see here what we are essentially saying is x is my identity whatever you are doing here 
either you will learn something useful or you don't learn anything i don't care when we do this kind of residual learning we basically facilitate this okay let's understand residual learning with an example in this example the network is trying to learn using convolutional neural network as you notice here the details in the edges of this image so it passes through all these layers and eventually we also pass the image of the bird so the network doesn't have to learn the details of the bird it only learns the high frequency details and this is what we call residual learning so after multi head attention and after all the uh, residual learning we will add everything and normalize things if you don't know what normalization means why is it used please go and watch this video these are the prerequisites to understand transformer architecture okay excellent so we have learned this we have learned this we have learned this this is done this is done now let's talk about the feed form so if you look at the architecture what we are saying that once everything is done we will pass the data through feed forward network we will also run residual network on it and then we will get the final output so what we are saying is we have an input of 512 we'll pass it through 2048 feed forward network and then we will bring it back 512 this is the end of the encoder block and you should notice that we also have nx here which basically means that we could have multiple layers of encoder and decoder in your original paper um they used six encoder and decoders so if i take an example of two what will happen is we will have our inputs it will go through all of this the output of this head will become input to the next one and so on and finally we will have a encoder representation of our input okay this is done this is done then 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 done now let's talk about masked multi head attention the decoder of transformer architecture is exactly the same as encoder with two basic differences number one is it uses masked multi head attention and the input of this multi head attention is coming from the output of the encoder to understand the decoder all we need to understand is what is masked and how these inputs are different okay so let's have a look during the training the decoder doesn't know what's the next word that it needs to predict so for example when we give one word eights the output is okay in the next round we will give two inputs and we'll get the output two then this will be the input and that's the output we will concatenate it here it's okay to be logical and the end for the decoder the input and output are little different so the input will be start and the expected output will be i then the input will be i and the expected output is will for input will the output will be share and so on therefore for given statement this goes to my encoder it will produce encoding in terms of numbers so zero and ones the decoder will have one input and it will predict one output and we will use cross entropy laws to basically understand if it's predicting the correct word or not again during the training time we don't want the decoder to look into the future words therefore we will use a mask which looks like this so obviously we will have one input which looks like this but with this input we will also share a matrix which looks like this which will basically mask every future word for a given iteration so for first iteration the decoder will only look at the word start 
For the second iteration, it will look two words. For the third iteration, it will look at three words, and so on. All of this will become crystal clear when we start doing our coding. Okay, so try to understand the concepts right now. Once all of this is done, the final piece of the puzzle is from this multi-headed tension, we will get one input, but for the decoder to provide the output, we need the encoding of the inputs and that comes from the output of the encoder. And this is how we provide it to the decoder. Notice every encoder head, this one or this one needs an input like this. And that is what we are providing here. This is just a copy of these embeddings which we get as an output from this encoder, okay? Now, obviously, whenever we are trying to build an AI model, we need to define a loss function because you always want to minimize the loss. That is all our AI model knows. So for the loss function in Transformers chatbot, you need to visit and watch this video. This is a prerequisite for this video. And you need to understand at least cross entropy laws and KL divergence laws to understand what we are doing in the coding section of building a chatbot using a transformer architecture. So in a nutshell, this is how it works. You, so your model will predict logits, which will be some numbers, zero and ones. Then we apply softmax on top of it, which you can see here. I have done it in two steps logits to the power e which will be this and then we apply the softmax therefore this will be my output and my true label will be 0 1 0 0 0 0 and based on this we will pick this word as the output of the decoder now let's jump to the excel and see how this works let's say this was my input and my expected output is well the logics given by my, or let's say the output of my AI model is this. This is my E, so E to the power of that value, right? We start running this. And then we take a sum of it, then we divide everything with the sum of it, therefore we get the normalized value. And this is basically, these two steps is basically the softmax function that I talked about, okay? And this is my true level which basically says I should be picking the word will and my model should also be predicting the word will. And this is how we will train our model. Now let me show you something very interesting. You might have seen on the chat GPT's playground that you can go and increase and decrease the temperature. Depending upon the temperature, the model will become more creative. What it means is this, when your model is giving an output, which is something like this, once you normalize it, you will have these values, right? What we do is we introduce a factor, which is temperature, which you see here. And if I say, and then I calculate alpha, alpha is temperature divided by 10. So the count is the count of the total output, okay? Now there are two things that we will do. So for my correct label, I will say one minus the alpha. And for everything else where you had almost zero values, I will say alpha divided by count minus one. What this will do is basically it will force the model to not pick this word every single time. Right? So try and understand it this way. If you don't use temperature, you're, you're going to always pick the highest predicted value. But when you start pick, but we start, but when you start introducing temperature, let's say a higher temperature of 10, it's too much, let's say 5. Now I'm saying there's a 50% probability of picking this word. So we talked about input embeddings that gives us the numerical embeddings of the words, the meaning of the word, which is learnable, position encoding, the position of the word in the sentence. We understand MHA, 
concat residual network normalize it feed forward it masked mha loss function last is optimizer <laughs>
And now let's have a look, how does it look? So the file, which is basically movie corpus conversation, it basically contains something like this, where it basically says, line number 4767 and line number 4770 are part of one single conversation. Similarly, in this conversation, there are one, two, three, four, eight different conversations. So this is all what we are getting from this file. This is basically like a metadata about your data. So once we have this, I will go and load the corpus lines into a variable called lines. You might get some error while loading this. Make sure you have correct encoding, which is this. Okay. Now if I print the lines, you will see this is how a line looks. For example, line number 1930, then we have some delimiter, if you want to call it, then U18, delimiter, M, delimiter, Isabella said, what did she say? She said, is that the man I knew, treasure, Sanchez, question mark. Similarly, line number this has been said by ML, and the statement that was said was, I'm abused, don't you think? So, so we have a lot of uh, conversations of enough from the movie, right? Okay. So far, so good. Now what we'll do is, we will split lines based on this delimiter. And we will do it for the uh, first item from the line. So what I will do is, I will show you how it looks. Because again, remember, data is the king. If your data is not correct, your model will not learn. So the zeroth index is basically this. They don't do. They do not, sorry. Index number one says something like this. They do too, right? And so on. So if I go back here and run this, you see I get L015, blah, 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 and they do not. And if I split this line, now I have each and every part of that text as a item in a list. Okay, so that's all, that's all why I have. So then what I'll do, I'll loop through lines and I will create an object that will have all the list from all the lines. So if, let me run this, right? And if I can show you the line dict, so now this dictionary has all the lines and what was said. I basically am giving away these three data. I don't need it. Who said it? What was the U0, U M0? I don't care. All I care is line number and what was said, right? So I have line 3091, which says, your father put cigarettes out on you, question mark, right? Perfect. I can pull out one sample line out of it. For example, this, okay, then how about we try some French cuisine, Saturday night, question, question. Now you should notice that we have three dots here, um, apostrophe here, and you know, I don't know, special characters. And we want to clean that. Therefore, I have designed a function which says remove punctuations. We will use this function to clean our data, right? So I've got punctuations. Whatever string was passed to this function, it will go through each character and it will return a clean version of that in a lower um, in a lower format. Excellent. Now, if I run this conversation zero split, you will get something like this. Now, there's one thing to notice is if I go up here, when we load this conversation in this variable, we got something like this, which is essentially a essentially string, right? But when we want to map one conversation to its actual words that was said, that was said, we need we need these conversations in Python list. And the way we would do it is by eval function. I'll show you how eval works. So if I go here and I say, what eval does is it takes the string and convert everything into a Python related syntax. It could be Python list, it could be a Python function, it could be a Python statement or anything. 
um, I have to say one less than two. And then I have to say just to say output. So you see what this eval did, it took all of it and evaluated it as if it was a Python code. So something like this. Right? Now you should notice if I pass a string which is a valid Python code but it is a string, eval will convert it into a Python code. So what we will do is we will take all of it as we did here. Now this is a string but you should notice it is also a list within a string. So we will run eval on it and this will give us a valid Python list. So if I say xx equals to this and then I say print xx and then type of xx it will print the list and the type will be class list perfect and if i remove the eval you will see that this is basically a string right so that's the difference and why are we doing this because we want to run a loop on this list so that for a given conversation we could pull these conversation lines from our data set which is here okay so far so good so what i will do is i will run a loop on conversations i will get the ids and then i will create question and answer pair out of it so i'll run this now we will use this for loop to basically create question answer pairs and let me show you how it looks. So I will say Q will pair zero. Um, oops, sorry, it has to be pairs. So now you see the pair one is list of two list. The first one is the question, can you make this quick? Blah blah blah. And the second one is the response. If we go for uh, let's say pair number two, we'll have similarly question and a response. Now, if you see here, we will provide the input which is the first list to the encoder, and then we will provide the second list which is the answer to the decoder, and we will test the output based on the decoder's output. So now let's have a look how many now let's have a look how many pairs of question and answers do we have. We have 221,000 pairs of question and answer. Let's run a loop to confirm if all the items in this list have two items. So if this runs okay, everything is okay. Perfect. Now you should understand one thing that AI model does not understand English. It only understands numbers, right? And therefore, the, our next step is to create word to index dictionary. For that, we will use counter from word frequency and we will run a loop on the pairs and we will update the word frequency. So once we do this, if I uncomment this, what it will do is it will create a dictionary of all the words that we have in our vocabulary and it will count how many times a word was used. For example, word price was 118 times. 100 bucks was used 173 times and so on okay so once we create the word frequency we will filter out all the words that has less frequency right so i have chosen a word as so i have chosen the minimum word frequency is eight you can process you can choose any number as word frequency you can for example go for five you can go for 25 or whatever you like i'll stick to eight so I will filter out all the words where the word frequency is less than 8. Then we have the word. After that, I will map it to the word map. And once I'm done with these steps, I will also create four new words. The first one is unknown. The second one is start. 
the third one is end and the fourth one is padding so let me run this and then i'll walk you through what i'm doing and why am i doing this so if i run the world map world map now this is how it looks right so the word can is at number one we is at number two and so on if you go to the end Okay, so before we do that, let's do this. So I'll run this. So we have 17,512 words in our word map. So if I do this, word underscore map, and I want this. I want to know what is the index of unknown. Okay, so that is 17,509. I also want to know about padding and and start. So the word padding has index zero in our word map. End is at five hundred eleven. Start is at five hundred ten, and unknown is five hundred nine. Now let's understand why do we have these additional words. So we have padding because if you remember from the theory part. That a maximum length in our case is 16, so we have defined it as 16. So if I go up here, I will have a sentence with words maximum 16 words in it. It is possible that for a given question, the answer could be smaller than the question. So, for example, it has eight words in question and nine words in answer. For example. if that happens we need to make sure that everything that we send to the model is is of same length therefore we will pad every um therefore we will pad every word which is shorter than our maximum length so that is clear now okay second question is why do we have unknown hmm well if you remember we said we want to remove all the words that are less frequently used so when we do that and imagine our sentence is this hello how are you and if the word hello has frequency of let's say 4 the way we will encode this it will become like this it will be unknown because we don't know this word this is not in our vocabulary it will be how are you and that is why we have this unknown in our vocabulary we need to start and end because we need to tell the encoder and decoder that then we need to tell the encoder and decoder where do we where the sentence starts and where does it end therefore we will artificially append these words to our sentence okay excellent we will save this word map corpus as json document so that we can load it whenever we want from the file system now we need to also encode everything from word to number and that's why we have these two functions encode encoder input and encode decoder input <laughs>
exact length okay so if i go number zero and say no i think it's fine you should get it now we will save this paired encoded json to a file because we will use it when we build our own data set now our data is ready it is ready to be sent to the transformer for learning Select. We will create movie data set class. It's a very simple class. It will load the data from the constructor function. In the get item, we will pull one pair as coder in, encoder input and decoder. And then we will prepare the target data like this. We convert everything to long tensor and then we will return this. Okay, we create train data. Now, if I randomly let's say pick number 10, this is how the tensor will look. If you remember, this is how the data was looking. If I copy, if I copy all of it, bring it here. This is exact same thing, it's just now has been transformed into a tensor. So 5, 0, 9, 100 and so on with 0. You should notice that the question remains the same. However, the reply, the second part has been transformed into two different items. The first one starts here but ends before this. And the reply, the encoder, sorry, the decoder's reply doesn't start from here. It starts from here and goes until the last word. Why is that? Again, go back to the theory section and if you see here, this was this is my input. This is my input to my encoder. We start from the start and we go until the end, but we remove the last part. And when we prepare the label so that you, we can compare input and output, we remove the first part and we keep the last part. And this we do because, if you remember, we do this. For every input, so for input its, we want the decoder to predict OK. And then for its OK, it, I want it to produce 2 and so on. This, to mimic this, we prepare this data set. We'll also prepare this reverse world map, which is very handy when we want to convert numbers to words. For example, if I go and say 103, this will give me the word at this particular index. So if I go and say 17, 509, this will be unknown. Okay. Just a helper function to convert tensor to a sentence. Then I can print it. So this was my uh, QR. So this was the random tensor that I pulled from my data set. And now I can use this function to print the input and output. So the input was this. And output is this okay we'll prepare a custom loader again if you're not sure what data loader is what is data set you have to go and watch the videos which are already available in the playlist and the playlist is available in the description of this video excellent <clears throat> excellent we have a batch size uh, we get a train loader so if i run this we'll get one item from the train loader and that item has 64 as batch size and the input is 16 so this is my encoder input this is my decoder input and this is my decoder output and i have size of all the three and i've just printed tensor to sentence so that you can see what we are sending to the model awesome now let's set the device Remember, uh, we also need to create mask. We need to create mask because we don't want our encoder to do cheating. Sorry, we don't want our decoder to cheat. We don't want it to look at the future words. Therefore, we will create this matrix where we will have padding for all the future words. Okay. We will do this via uh, this function and it's a very simple one. So if I say, give me a tensor of 
2 comma 4 comma 4 and if I print it, it will look like this. Let me make it 1 4 comma 4, right? I could also say 4 comma 4. Okay, and now if I say transpose this, oops. Now this looks like the matrix that we need for the for creating the mask. And this is the technique that we will use to create the mask. Also, we are almost there. Now the data preparation is over. We will create four different classes, create our model, run the loop, train it, and we will see how this works. So the first class that we want to create is token embedding, which is here input embedding basically right we want something like this so we are saying that token embedding you can give it any name you like i need the vocabulary size and i need the embedding size and padding id with all of this we will create token embedding we will initialize the weight and this is very important because if you do not initialize the weight the model will not learn okay and then we will create the forward function. We will create this embedding layer using nn dot embeddings. It's, it's, a, it's an embedding layer that takes the total vocab size, the embedding size and padding index to create the embedding for us. Okay, it's very simple. We'll run this. Then we need positional embedding, which is this one. This is also not very difficult. We'll, we'll just define it here. Positional embeddings will be um, torch dot zeros, maximum length and the model length. So the D model is basically number of dimensions we want in a model. And maximum length is the length of the maximum words that we will be gonna send. Then we will use Then we will use this formula to basically calculate the position division term and we will assign it to our positional embedding. You should notice one thing that we will explicitly mention that required grad equals to false which means we don't want any learning to be happening on this class. Okay, And then we basically return the positional embedding run this. Now we will create an embedding class. Embedding class will have token embeddings, which is here. It will also have positional embedding, which is here. And then we will say in the forward function, we will say token embedding. So whatever input was provided, whatever input was provided to the model, pass it to the token embedding so that we can get the meaning of the word. Multiply it by the square root of the embedding size. So if my embedding size is 6, we multiply with the square root of that. But we will use better embedding size, maybe 128. We will multiply the square root of that. And we will get positional embedding. And eventually, we will just add both of them to get the embeddings. Okay. If you want to test this, you could say, let's say, T1 equals to torch dot rand um, let's say two comma my batch size is let's say four uh, let's say vocab size um, let's define it first so we'll say my maximum length is 16 and my embedding size is 128 so we'll create the embedding model here I'll say embed equals to this it has Vocabulary size, let's say my vocabulary size is, I don't know, 200, I have 200 words, or I could say length of word math. So we have already created it, so we could provide that. And embedding size, um, we could say, let's say 128, maximum length is, let's say, 16. So I could also say embed size equals to 128, and max length equals to 16. Then we can provide it here as well, so we don't have to hard code it. 
<clears throat> All right. Now, since we have the embeddings layer, now we can go and basically design our transformer. Now, the good thing is that we don't have to design everything on our own because PyTorch has already done this for us. So I could go here and say transformer PyTorch. Not looking for the movie. So this architecture is already designed for us. What we need to do is we need to call it like this. Provide number of dimensions, number of head, encoder layer, decoder layer, dim feed forward, drop out, and everything else. We'll keep most of the things as default. So therefore, going back to our code, we will say we'll define a transformer class and we'll define you know dimension of the model, head, encoder layer, decoder layer, forward layer, and dropout. Maximum length is 50. And then we will basically super transformer. We will get our vocab. We'll create the um, class variables. And then input embeddings will be basically embedding vocabulary, dimension of the model, and maximum length. So that is there already. This you have already seen here as an example. Then we'll create transformer, which will be again um, from torch.nn transformer. We will define batch first as true because our data is designed in that way. The projection layer is input feature is dimension model and output is obviously vocab. Last but not least, we will initialize the weights and we will initialize in this way. Again, this is very important. You will not see this in most of the tutorials and that's why your model will struggle to learn. Therefore, make sure you definitely initialize your model with initialization weights. In the forward function, now this is a little interesting, we will have encoder input and decoder input. The first thing is we will take the encoder input and we will run it through the input embedding layer and we'll convert the um, tensor to the long tensor. Then we will again run the decoder input to the embedding layer because we need positional encoding for encoder and decoder both. Once we have that, we will create the source key padding mask which is basically saying whenever the encoder input is equal to padding, give me the, that will become my mask. If you want to see how that looks, let's do um, a sample for that. So if I go here, we basically want to create something like this, but let's understand this from here. So this is my encoder input. If I copy this, bring it here. You should notice that my encoder input has some things and then we have padding, 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 right? If I say encoder input dot shape, this has batch size of 64 and then 16 length of the word. Now, if I say this, let's say T1 equals to equal equals to um, since all of these are number, I would say word underscore map and whenever it is padding. If I say print dot shape, it will be of the same shape as it was before. But if I print T1, you will see that it gives me false, 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 and then true, true, true. What this means, if I go and select only zero, so if I only look at the first word, you see that it says, oh, please don't go out this way, Mr. Belly. All of these are false because this is not padding. And then after that, everything is, else is padding. So until here, nothing. Until here, everything is some sort of English word. And after that, it is true because everything is padded. And this is exactly what we are doing here. When we are saying we want to create source padding and target padding from the encoder input and decoder input, whenever the vocab is equal to padding, whenever the inputs are equal to padding, we want to create that square matrix, okay? We create memory key padding as well, which we keep equals to source. Our target mask is basically self dot transformer, generate square subsequent mask, and we provide decoder input with the size. And this function is given to us by PyTorch. It basically creates a square subsequent mask for a given size, which will look exactly like this depending upon the size provided. Okay. Brilliant. 
Once all of that is done, we will convert everything to float. This is the only tensor that was not created using any of the input sources. Therefore, we need to send this to a device as well. Therefore, we have two devices. And then we say we run everything through the transformer layer and we get the features out of it. We provide the features to the projection layer and then we get the logist, logits at the end. When we do that, we basically get something like this from the model. Then we will run it through the softmax, run it through our run it through our loss function, and then we calculate the loss. As simple as that. So let me um, run this. Then I just want to show that in the word map, padding is at zero index, and the total length is this. Now I'll create a transformer model and from train loader, I will get some sample data, print the initial shape, put everything to device, run the data, input, encoder input and decoder input through the model, get the output and then print the shape of the output and shape of the decoder output. Okay, so let's run this and then I'll break it because I don't want to run this loop forever. When we do this, we are 100% sure that everything that we have done so far, all the data preparation that we have done, has been done in the right way. Now there's one thing important to understand is this. Now what I'm saying is when I print out shape, I'm printing this. I'm saying my batch size is 64. My word length is 17. So every word, every sentence has 17 word maximum. The output that we get is 17,512, which basically means is for all the words in our vocabulary, my model will predict something like this for every word in my uh, vocabulary, right? So it will give me some sort of you know logic output. When we run this output through our loss function, all of this will be ran through a softmax function. Therefore, we will have something like this as an output and whichever, whichever word has the maximum value that will be picked as my output. And of course, decoder output already have a design value, right? So we already have these 17 words that it should predict. And based on that, we will calculate the loss every single time. Perfect. We'll create an Adam um, class optimizer. This is very important. Without this, without this Adam warm-up, your model will not learn. Therefore, as we discussed during the theory part, Adam optimizer is this. We we'll apply this basically functions. We apply this mathematics basically here. It's a very simple one. And then we say for every step, get me a new learning rate, update all the parameters on the optimizer and then do the step, okay? It's, it's fairly simple, it's not very complex. Then we define another class, which is loss with label smoothing. So if I can go here and say loss with label smoothing. What you see here that I explained here with temperature alpha and everything that is precisely what we are doing here. That's it. So if I run this, I will pass a sample data to this loss function and we'll get some loss out of it. Then we define a function to evaluate our model. So once we have trained our model, we would like to see for a given input what is my output. So we set the model to evaluation mode, start symbol, end symbol, of course. The first input to my model will be start token. Then we will run the loop for maximum length minus one. We will give this encoder input and decoder input, which is basically just the start symbol. We will let model 
predict whatever it think it should predict and then we will take this token concatenate it and then we will provide this input token again to the model for the entire loop so that we can do something like this okay brilliant um, let me run this here's the function that i created to get results we provide the model to it list of questions and it runs through all the question and print the models or let's say transformers answer so let me run this and then run this now this will give us three results which you should understand is just garbage because our model has not gone through the training we have not trained our model it's, it has not learned anything it's just providing random outputs <laughs> Not. Now, believe it or not, it took me around one week to figure out all of this, okay? And after doing all of this, so we will create a new model, new transformer model with 200 as dimensions, number of head we will use 2, encoder layer we will use 2, feed forward will be 200 and dropout as 2. We will run this for 10 epochs with the starting learning rate as zero. And as I said, it took me around a week to do this. And even after doing that, the model was okay. It performed in a okay sense. Now you might say, why bother doing any of this if my model is performing okay? The reason we are doing this is because, because we want to learn every nuance that is there to learn about transformer architecture. Once we learn this, in the next video, I will show you how to use a pre-trained model and then build your own chatbot, which is extremely, extremely advanced, much like what you see in the chat GPT. Okay? So, don't get disheartened. Let's run this. Okay? Um, obviously, there's a training loop. So, for every epoch and for all the data in the data loader, I get the sample out of it. I get the input. Encoder input, I get the decoder input, decoder output, send everything to device. Send these inputs to the transformer, get an output. Run that output with our loss function, get the loss. Using our optimizer class, uh, we do back propagation and that's it. As you can see, for first round, it has gone through some training. And now for every input, that we saw here hello how are you i like food are you hungry initially my model predicted this stop 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 microwave stop stop whatever but after very basic training now it's sending me something like this what i will do is i will stop this training change my runtime to gpu run everything again and i'll come back okay perfect all right, so I have run all the training. I have saved the model on this checkpoint. I will load this and then I will create the model with the same architecture that I used when I saved this checkpoint. So let me run this. And now I will restore my model from this checkpoint. I will restore my optimizer from the same checkpoint. And there it is. And now it's the moment of truth. Are you ready? So what we will do is we will run these four questions through my transformer and we will see what is the answer we are getting. So the first, for the first question it's saying, I don't know what you're talking about. For the second one it's saying, I don't want to see you again, mm, okay. When I say I'm, I'm just happy, it says I don't want to hear it, uh, that's mean. And when I say I kiss a girl, it says I don't know what to do with you. You should see that it's kind of giving me same sort of answer. It has it has not learned or not responding the way you know a chat GPT would do, but this is a good starting point. From here, we will see how we can use the pre-trained models that are available for free, and then how we can build our own chatbots on top of it. These freely available um, pre-trained models are trained for days and even for weeks. And I'm sure you and I we don't have that kind of you know resources to basically train a model for weeks or a month. Okay. So in the next video, we will use those pre-trained models 
fine tune it so that it becomes our own chatbot that can act in a really good way. Okay, before we go, I have one more thing to show you. Why? Let's see what does it say. <laughs> All right, my logical friends. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your time. And I hope you learned something today. And if you did, make sure you like the video. Share it with three of your friends who you think might benefit from this video. This is a zero cost effort from your side that will help this channel a lot. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay logical.